podcast. Like, you know, I, I ain't gonna talk too much because we gotta get into this topic. How are y'all doing? I ain't even look at the damn phone. I was sitting here talking so much, but <laughs> shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to everybody listening. Shout out to my boy Stone. Shout out to Spanish. Uh, what is it? Spanish coach on stereo. Shout out to Cammy. There have been a lot of people who already came in here listening to me. What's shoot the up? Show. What's up? Um. All right, y'all. So yes, it's rare. This is not Wednesday, and this is not Saturday. This is motherfucking Thursday, and this is I'm Out Stereo. My name is Shan, and that is Greg from Young Black and Bother. You can find my ass on She Gets It podcast. All right, now we giving you a hot sixty topic, meaning we getting off this bitch at ten o'clock. All right, but in the meantime, y'all got us with this topic, and the topic is: Can you come back after the break? And the Sorry. break is like that break that you take in like it could be like three months into relationship six months into relationship with somebody and just like uh i need a break you're getting on my nerves you yelling a little bit more um i'm not happy here uh i don't like the way your head looks right now um i've been looking at your uh overbite and it's bothering me. I just need a break because I'm starting to nitpick dumb shit, right? And I don't know about you, Greg, because you married now, but if you could think back, have you ever mm. taken a break in a relationship that you were in? And yeah. why? Yeah, um, a few times. Uh, but the thing is, like, when you sent me over the docket, I was thinking about, like, was it a break or did I, like, kind of give up but they were still hoping that, like, it was still a thing, so that could be that could be a reason, though. Yeah. So if that's the case, that's definitely happened where I was kind of over the situation, but they were under the assumption that it was a break. So mm-hmm. we we definitely done that. I wasn't you know too thrilled about it because like it was it wasn't a break for me. It was like okay, we stopped fucking with each other. I stopped fucking with you, and. Mm-hmm. Um, you're still around, so it just became a thing. I was like, all right, well, we can hook up. Yeah, it was like a convenience thing for me. So it's like, since you're around and we already know each other, like, I- I'll play along, but I'm already over you. And that's that been worse than already, I already know you, puss. <laughs> and I'm telling you. Oh, my God. Top <laughs> tier. Top tier. Oh, my God. Okay. So I've taken a break. I've taken a break. Um, in a relationship that was odd to me. So, like, you know how you, like, you talk to different people and you just say, you know what, bitch? Well, you don't say it to yourself, but I say this to myself. Um, Let's try something different. Let's try something that we wouldn't initially go for and see how it works, Right. Mm-hmm. Something that doesn't have any drama in it, something that doesn't have a third wheel attached, something that doesn't include outside babies, um, somebody that's really like on their shit and just wants to be in a relationship also, right? So I on that shit with somebody that should have remained a friend and I let them graduate to something else. And I started, like, compromising the shit that I wanted out of a man for the shit that he gave. And that was my fuck up. So, like, Mm. there were um, character... I'm not going to say they're flaws. I mean, they might be okay for some other woman. But there are things character-wise in a man that I needed that I knew he couldn't provide... So when those instances will happen where I would see the problem, I will instantly cover it up with something that he's good at so I can Mm -hmm. stay around. And it worked for a little bit. And then it was like this overwhelming feeling of like, Chantal, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you will not feel secure with this this guy ever. Nope. You will always feel like if y'all were somewhere... And some man wanted to tap on your booty, he would have been like, "But was your booty really close to him though? Maybe he he just you know breezed past it." And I can't be with nobody like that who's instantly 
avoiding what yeah. you know what I'm saying and yep. and I was like I can't like I can't feel like I have to defend myself while I'm with my man and yeah. that's kind of what I felt like in that relationship so I kept convincing myself I just got like I, I made like this bullshit reason I was like hey I think we need a, I think we need a break um I don't know, and I I took off I I pre took off his his apartment key off my key ring, and I gave it to him, and I was like, "Don't worry about my stuff at your apartment. You can just throw it in the trash." Oh it no! Was, it was so it was so dramatic, but I just didn't know what to do to be like nigga. I don't know how to tell you, um, that there's nothing wrong with you, but. You're wrong for me without hurting your feelings. I couldn't tell that, him that. You know, that is one of the hardest conversations to have, though. Boy, like, just, just, so, just try to tell somebody. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do it, Greg. So I met about um on 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 some. It's not you, it's me type shit. <laughs> mm. but that's, but that's real- sometimes it's sometimes it is you, but you're still just like, oh, you know, it, it's me like ten percent, but like the other ninety. It's all you, but I'll take the blame if I can get rid of you. Like, yes. this ain't working. Yes. So eventually I broke up with him. I took a break and he was fucking like lost. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Like, we didn't have no <laughs> arguments. It wasn't no beef. It was just out the blue. Like, I can't do this. And um, it was like, I think it was like a week and a half, Greg. I couldn't even hang. I started, I started to feel bad. I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, why are you, why are you killing something before it actually has to die? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes, though, you just, yeah. I was gonna say sometimes you just have to like, you know, take the horse out back and just shoot it because like, if you. Don't... <laughs> so, so, so That's what just... I should have did, but I went back. I no, went you, back. You... And I tried to convince myself that um, it could work. And then whenever we, it came to like time for us to fuck, I would purposely think about somebody else so I could get through it. Oh, my Lord. Mm-mm-mm. And when, See. <laughs> when it mm. came to like, um, like, just like the standard boyfriend, girlfriend shit, I... I let it go. I let it happen in his in his world, and then on my side, it was like, you know, you know, I'm not introducing it to my my people. Yep. You know, you just my my person over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But honestly, like sometimes you have to kind of like die with the lie. You got to be like, you know what? Like I know what you mean to me, but you don't. And it's better that you don't because then they become like the moment you tell them the truth, they become super fucking clingy. And they start doing things and changing their behavior. So it's sometimes better just like to let that person be happy with what they think is the idea of you and them. Mm -hmm. And then just be like, you know what? I'm actually already over this situation. I just haven't figured out a way to like remedy them from my life. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to let like, you know, it die out and Mm fizzle out and hopefully they recognize it. And, you know, for me, I I was probably the king of that shit because it started with, you know, the text messages, those would die off. And then like the phone calls, because I was one of those like old school, like, you know, I'll still call you if I have conversation when we do that. And then I would just randomly just be busy in times that I didn't need to be busy. It's like, oh, do you want to go to dinner on Tuesday? It's like, you know what? I actually got homework. And I'm like, yo, I, I haven't been in school for like three years. Why the fuck am I telling this person I got homework? You know, just <laughs> shit like that. So, yeah. Not the homework. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh my God! Like that was just like, was, you know, never. This is some some. Uh, I'm gonna play these messages after this, but this is some like, don't convince yourself that somebody is your person if you feel like this is not it. They're yeah. good. They're okay. Um, I like the fact that they're true to themselves. But if they're not for you, then they're not for you, and don't beat yourself down to make somebody fit in with you where they don't belong. 
Because that shit mm-hmm. be pointless at the end of the day. Like, I really put effort in to someone who I hated their fuck faces. Oh, 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 you missed the tweet then. I'm sorry. But, but before we, yeah, I'm not going to go on a tangent. All I'm going to say is there was two tweets back to back that were trending. I'm going to send them to you. The one tweet was, what is your orgasm face? Oh. And and the second one is like, do you make noises when you orgasm, or are you a quiet person who orgasms? So that that just <laughs> it, when when you mentioned the or, like you know his sex face, it's like oh, that it definitely reminded me of that tweet. So I hated it. <laughs> Wait, so was he like the face? Like, can you you have to describe the face now? <sighs> the face was like <laughs> it was like I was hurting him. Oh. So it's like, like his, I'm about to nut face. It's like if he like his, stuck his, his leg the on the edge of the bed. Like, oh my gosh, my dick is broke. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> and then after he would nut, he would just like come out and then he would curl up in the fetal position. <laughs> oh my God. No. It was horrible. Oh my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Let me- let me find out he was sucking his thumb after he nut. He was like, hey, by I the way. I'm just like, whose man is this? Come get him. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I'm lost. I'm lost. But, okay. And then the second um, time that I I took a break, it was because I actually had, like, I actually wanted to try a legit one-on-one relationship Mm -hmm. not a relationship with somebody who kind of has somebody but not really like I wanted a person that was coming on the same level as me so I would try relationships so whenever the relationship for real I would put my old person on the back burner and they hated that shit but to me, yeah, yeah. you really wasn't on the back burner because you had a bitch. But why is it, you you wanna know what's funny is the people who say shit like you're putting them on the back burner, they already have tangible shit already. It's like you can't yes. have attention from all like everybody can't give you equal attention, bro. Like and you know, me when I was out here doing shit, I, I've done that before, to be completely honest, where it's like, yo, I know I'm talking to somebody, but I have somebody, but mm-hmm. why aren't you giving me the attention? Mm-hmm. And the reason why I, the reason why I did that is because like at that time the person I was actually with wasn't giving me the attention I wanted, so I had to go and get it elsewhere. But mm-hmm. this I knew I knew why I was doing that shit, and I knew you know I can't kind of monopolize your time. But mm-hmm. from what I'm getting from what you're saying is like yo, he wanted you, and he still want, what do you call it uh, that statement? You wanted his cake and eat it too. You yeah, want to call it that. Which that like. But and you know what? Like, for a long for a long time I was okay with that shit because I was busy and I never mm-hmm. I learned to enjoy not having somebody that was for me every day, which is a, a con now because I'm single as fuck. And if I want if, if I wanted a relationship today, I don't want to see that person every day. Mm-hmm. So I've been like trained by that one person to enjoy not seeing the person I, I like to be around every fucking day. So now yeah. it's kind of like, now I have to find somebody who's okay with sir, I want to see you when I want to see you, but when I don't want to see you, it's not that you did anything wrong. I just don't want to see you. Yeah. You know, it sounds that, weird, but... Yeah, but the way you're saying that, like, that is it's simple and it's, like, directed to the point. A lot of people don't do that. Um, there are a lot of people who just like, oh, well, you know, when we spend time together, like we spend time together. And it's like, but that that's so surface level because it's like, yeah, like you go to work and you're yeah. not with that person. So it's not the same way. But you have to, the way you just displayed it and the way you said it is how men want that said to them. I'm just telling you that as a guy, you know, I would rather a woman say, hey, when we're together, we're together, you know, in that aspect. Because I get the gist of it. I'm an adult. But when <laughs> we're not, I'm doing my own fucking thing. Like that is a more commendable, respectable approach to it versus, you know, pulling the, hey, guess what? Um, we're, we're together, you know, in an aspect, but there's like a little like caveat to every little thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And, it's, and, and when you say like, when we're together, we're together. When we're not, you know, I'm doing my own thing. It's not yeah. I'm, I'm fucking other people. It's mm-hmm. I, 
I need time. I, I need time and space to miss you. I need time yeah. and space to not have you here. That way, when we do get back together again, I actually want to absorb your everything, right? Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that. So when I did take breaks away from that person, it was when I wanted to be fully into a, a, a new relationship or anything. So the, the ongoing joke has always been that, like, oh, you always get rid of me when you get a, a new boyfriend. <laughs> Nigga, that, yes! That, yes! That, that's, because, that's number one. Oh, what I look like having you linger around when yes. you have a, a person this whole time. Yo, that that's always scared me when people get offended at the fact that it's like, yo, like that's the safer approach to it. It's like, yo, I'm not kind of happy right now. And yes, we had fun. And if this doesn't last, and you know for a fact I'm coming back to you. But if you're going to be a bitch about it because I'm trying to be happy <laughs> at the moment, then you never get it. And that's that quote where, you know, women say it a lot, where, like, dudes, like, talk themselves out of pussy all the time. This is, that's ranked, like, number four in reasons why men can't get pussy. is because of that. Like, the girl that they were fucking, the woman that they were fucking, the girl ends up getting a man or something like that that she's dating. And for some unknown reason, instead of saying, you know what, yeah, they're together, they're happy, let me go ahead. And you know what, let me just go back to the person I was already fucking that she was completely fine with have like real life temper tantrums some of them go out their way to you know find your person on social media Mm -hmm. and just be trolls some of them blatantly like call you back to back to back to back to back to back knowing damn well like you're with this person for what though yeah we're not we're not together we're not going to be together you you clearly has always shown that you can't be with one person in a relationship. You feel like you should have more. So I can't be like, I'm trying to make you my person. No, because you feel like you should have people. Exactly. And my thing is like, I don't feel like I should have people. Like a lot of women be like, yeah, you know, I got to keep my roster just in case. Or I got to, you know you know, have backup just in case I'm not that woman. Mm -hmm. When I give my time and my attention to a man, it's for you. Ain't nobody I'm texting, ain't nobody I'm sitting on the phone with for four hours, ain't nobody else I'm sending nudes to, I'm not going to lunch with nobody. It's you, and if it ain't you, it ain't you. I think my issue with people who talk about having a roster, they be having a roster and they be thinking that everybody can play the same position. Like when you watch football, you know for a fact there's a running back, there's a quarterback, but you don't ask the running back to throw the ball. So when I see women and men too, but, you know, I told you I only deal with women. When they're like, oh, you know, I have to keep my roster just in case he fucks up. It's like, yeah, but you're expecting every dude that you talk to on your roster to do the exact same fucking thing. And it don't work that way. And you know, there's one girl, I can't say her name on here, but, you know, she will tell you, she's like, yeah, I always have four guys I talk to. And the way she portrayed it to me was the guy that she's actually, you know, attracted to and wants, but he currently has a situation. The guy that she's actually dating in the interim, but she's not completely happy with him. The guy that she used to fuck that at any time that she needed it, he can call, what do you call it? Like, she can call him. That's and the much. one that, yeah. And, you know, number four was the the guy that has been in the friend zone and he'll take her places and do things with her, but she knows she's not putting out for him. And I was like, yo, like you do all of that. You have four different guys like vying for your life, you know, you know, your lifeline for a relationship. It's like, Mm. but for what though? Like, like, are you, I don't want to say, are you happy? Because I kind of, you know, it's kind of disrespectful, but it's like, do you need that? It's like a lot of women that do that shit, they're never happy. Yeah. But they go on, like, you know, social media and stuff like that, and they portray being happy because it sounds cool to a bunch of fucking strangers. Like, yo, like, you know, I got four dudes that want to fuck with me. It's like, yeah, they want to fuck with you, but the key word there is fuck with you. Like, <laughs> they don't want to get with you. They don't want to date you, like, for real, for real. They they want what they want. Now, there is going to be, you know, some caveats. There's going to be that guy who wants that relationship. Like, you know, like you were saying, Shan, earlier, there will be people who want relationships, but those are usually the really clingy motherfucker who's like, yo, like, if you would just like ease up just a little bit 
and allow me to like you the way you like me, then yeah, the relationship will work. But it oh, never works that way. It hey, never works that way. People don't wait for the reciprocation of people and their feelings. They want to mm-hmm. throw all of their feelings onto people and hope that shit stick. Yep. That shit be like repulsive sometimes. Like, ew. I know it like as soon as I tell him I'm off today, then man could be like, so we gonna do this, this, and this. No, I'm off Mm-mm. today. If you would like to see me, you can ask, but don't make my day plans for me just because I told you I was off today. Yeah. That that's crazy. <laughs> like, damn. Like I, I did not realize we got to the point where well, you know what? I've been out of the game, so I, I don't even have a dog right. to fight. You're I'm not supposed like, to whatever, man. But- yeah, a lot of these dudes are super aggressive, um, super like, you know, you know, I'm, I, I just want to, I just want to come see you. I just, I just need, I just need this. Um, yeah, I know you're talking to somebody, but you know, um, but I miss you though. I just, I can, can you just pick up the phone? No, I'm, I'm with the person I'm with in my face. I'm not answering the phone for you. Yeah. So let me ask you, like, do you feel like when you when men start showing those insecurities, like all those examples you just gave, is that like a high priority for you to like instantly want to take a break from them? Like if they start saying like, oh, I know you're talking to somebody else. I know you got other dudes on your line and shit like that. Are you like, you know what? That That's a red flag for me. You kind of needy. You get kind of pushy. It's not even like a red flag for me. It's just like I reiterate like you know, we were, we're not, we weren't doing anything. Mm-hmm. There, was, there was ever, never any titles, you know, what is this neediness? Where is this? Yeah. What is yeah. it? Because you don't want shit. So what is it? And it's yeah. more so like some men don't want to be told at this time anymore you can't um we can't go out together you can't pull up when you want to anymore now there's boundaries and they start to get into their their tantrums like Mm -hmm. no there was never no boundaries before like who is this nigga I'm like why does it matter then they start asking for names what's their name where you know him from uh what what does he do it's not it doesn't matter what he does he's not you he's not and you have to be okay with the fact that you don't want any you don't want anything more than what was already done and we already did what we did so what is a problem now and a lot of times a problem just be People don't want to take breaks because they don't want to know that you are no longer an option. Mm-mm-mm. The thing is, like, you're always an option if you act right. Like, if you act right, honestly, you're always an option. But when, at least for me, like, as long as you're just like being the person that I met that I was attracted to, and you just continuously are that person, but you're just improving on being that person, then I'm fucking mm-hmm. with you. But the moment you start showing like chinks in your armor, I'm starting to look at you like, yo, like. You presented to me a completely different person. What up, y'all? Don't forget to check out Loudmouth Stereo merch at teespring.com slash stores slash loud dash mouth dash stereo dash shop. All right, let's get back to the show. And I didn't agree to those terms. I, I don't want that. Like, I would much rather just, like, be done with you. So, you know, I guess, like, bringing it, like, full circle about, like, you know, coming back after a break, like, that that's a break for me. Like, once I start realizing, like, what you presented to me and what you had, you know, in front of me as a contract, a verbal contract, I don't want that no more. Like, you came off as, like, somebody who's not needy, not pushy, and, you know, you know how to, when we spend time, we spend time, when we don't, we don't. That was what I wanted. Mm-hmm. But this new shit... Once you start feeling entitled to me because, you know, we had some type of rapport, some sexual, like, you know, relationship or something like that, then I have to ease up because it's like, yo, like, maybe I gave you a little bit too much. So in order to, you know, relinquish that, 
I have to step away. And when I step away, that means I'm taking a break. But it can't just be me taking a break. We are taking a break, which means you have to go and evaluate you, meaning that you have to try to figure out on your own without asking me, without trying to tell me, hey, you know, why are we taking a break? You should already know. The reason why I'm taking this break is, you know what? I, I was kind of being a little bit passive aggressive. I was like being a little bit needy. I was saying things I didn't need to say. And mm-hmm. <laughs> that that self-reflection is something that a lot of people need to do when they take breaks. But what they do is they don't want to take breaks. They want to go and still have contact. They still want to ask questions. It's like, like, what if I just honestly just didn't want to deal with you at that point, but I'm trying to be nice and not like tell you, like, leave me the fuck alone. You can figure Sometimes it out at that point. Sometimes <laughs> you can't be nice. Mm-mm. You You shouldn't be nice. And, you know, especially if that's how you feel, because you know, Shan, for a fact, like if you try to tell them exactly how you feel, you know it's going to break their heart or it's going to upset them, but it's also going to drag on a conversation you really don't want to have at that mm-hmm. point. So it's like, you know what? Just If you just leave me alone, I'm actually saving you the hassle of having your feelings hurt. So <laughs> it's okay. Just take the break. The break, it could, you know, the break could be a week. It could be a month. Or honestly, we could just be completely done. But that's on you. If you give me enough time to try to like figure it out and take that break that I need for me, then guess what? Like I may come back to you. But if I don't, then just take it on the chin and just roll with that. It's it's going to be okay. There are plenty of oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I um it was a it was just you know when somebody's having like a whole tantrum that you you actually tried to have a relationship with someone different and then they just find out for what mm-hmm. and then you start to explain but then you start to tell yourself like I don't owe you shit and if you was really yeah. about your business I would have never had to try a different relationship but because you Facts. were fucked up I tried a different relationship and then they want to know why the shit didn't work and then mm-hmm. you 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 kept you like you begin to tell them like this is why it didn't work and they, and they, and then they'd be like so that see see that's why you should never did X Y and Z in the first place. That's kind of like telling somebody just because you have an opportunity to do something that you wanted, you should not go for it. Yeah, you can't but tell you nobody to... when they don't have nothing holding them back from trying. So if exactly. if I tried a relationship and it didn't work, and um, now the fact that it didn't work. You feel like, oh, let me throw it in your face why you should never try. I'm not about to sit here and tell you all the pros of that person. One, because that's not my person no more. Two, because even if I do tell you the pros of that person that are not the pros of you, it doesn't matter, but it's going to make you mm-hmm. feel a way. Yep. It, like, stop asking about people who are not relevant. Stop asking about why people tried relationships or took breaks when you were probably the main cause of that break being taken. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to do a call to action. I, you know, I've, n- I've never done this before, but, you know, I, I want to ask some of the people. I'm going to shout a couple people out. So shout out to Cami, Chrissy. We have Chris, uh, a.k.a. Pretty Girl Rock, and we have Black is Love. Um more specifically, there are four women right now who are, you know, just listening to the show. I want to get their opinion on this. Like, have they ever actually been in a situation where, like Shane said, like, you know, you needed the break, but pretty much like they didn't want to take it and they didn't know how to like, because for me as a guy, it's a completely different thing. And I don't want to like, you know, try to monopolize the time on the show this week. You know, I usually do that, but I want to like hear from the the women that are in the audience and be like, yo, like, do y'all have these circumstances? Because I hear it way too often, but I never actually get to hear like the context of like why they needed to take the break. It's usually like, hey, I took a break from him, but it's never a but. It's always just like, yo, I took a break. And then, you know, it kind of like stopped because it's usually the same scenario of, oh, he started to get really clingy or the sex was bad, the sex was weak, blah, blah, blah. I want to hear from y'all. So hopefully, you know, y'all can tell us like, you know, the answer to our question, like, can you come back after the break? Like, would you? And why? Who's gonna speak? Who's gonna speak? 
I will say um, if if you figure out a reason to break, don't ever go back because it's, nobody's ever ever fully invested on the second go around. Never, never. Like if you ha- if you have to take a break, like you've already you already had one foot out of the door to begin with. But I- I'm gonna let the you know the ladies talk because you know me. I'll talk for an hour, so. Go ahead. We got the voicemail already, so let's go. Let's see who we got. Hey, Chan is my name. And Greg, how you doing? The question of the day is, can you come back after the break? Well, being that I am um, raised by old school people, there's no such thing as a break. So either we're broken up or we're together. Either we're married or we're not. Either we're single or we're we have a boyfriend or girlfriend. It's no breaks. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you what breaks means to me. To me, a break means that you're looking at something else and you think the grass is greener on the other side. Mm-hmm. Ain't no grass greener on the other side. So if you don't want me, let me go and let me go find somebody who's going to love me for me. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. That is the problem. There's no such thing as a break. People trying to justify stuff. No, either you with me or you ain't. Either you love me or you're not. Yeah, we need to call her up on stage. We need to call her up on stage because I feel like she has more to say. I I, I feel like she has more to say. So, you know, I I don't know if we've ever done this though, Shane, like, because I don't know how it works, but maybe like if we have her come up on stage and we'll give people like, you know, a couple minutes to honestly just like have the same perspective as her where they can like, get this shit off and then they can go back down to the audience i know it's not like clubhouse but that would be dope just like have them come in and explain instead of just going and having to play the voicemails they can just get all their thoughts out in like one cohesive like way so hello, hello. hi hi how are you good and you yeah this is my first time um hearing y'all so um i'm black as love or whatever yeah hey what's, what's going on welcome to loudmouth Hey, I think y'all probably been in my lives. Um, if you mm-hmm. ever heard of Malika Bias, um, yep. yeah, Ebenezer Scrooge, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Would you agree that people who get separated in their marriage and get back together is a no? Thing? I don't. Well, I can I can give you an example for myself. Um, I've been married, um, Oop. and I got a divorce. Mm-hmm. And I got a divorce because if you call yourself the the head of the household, be the head. Yeah. So we, I got a divorce. It couldn't work, and you know it was other things too. You know, drugs was involved, and I, I ain't got time for that. But okay. then when I when I, I I gave myself a two year break, and then when I went back into the dating world, I was dating this younger, like three years younger, um, mm-hmm. this guy. And then one day he was like, "Oh, can we take take a break?" I said, "No, can we break up?" <laughs> is the word. And then he said, "Huh?" And I said, "Huh?" And I said, "You young motherfuckers!" I said it just like I said it. <laughs> I said, I, "I'm not raised that way. I was raised with old school parents. My parents, they was they was married until my father died. So that was their break. The death is what gave them the break." Not oh, because <laughs> I'm looking on the other side and I think I see something better than you. Yeah. Ah, uh, 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 t- 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 no, no, no. That ain't it. So when yeah. he said, "Oh, can we take a break?" I said, "No, we could break up, have a good day, click up." It wasn't mm-hmm. 24 hours. He was like, "Can we get back together?" No. Make up your mind. You want yeah. the breakup or you want to stay? Mm-hmm. There's no in between. See. The millennials, they adding stuff to this shit. Nah, fuck that. Fuck that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nah, ain't no in between. Either you love me or you don't. Or if it's something yeah. I'm doing wrong, you can sit down and say, well, you know what, for right now, I feel like, um, you know, it's no communication. It's no this. It's no that. Why can't we have a talk like two adults? Yeah. We don't have to I take a I'll... break. We can have a conversation and then I need to fix what I need before I lose you exactly. or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. I wish a nigga would. <laughs> yeah. Come but that's you know, honest. And you know what's funny? To this day, now we've been broken up since 2016. He's still chasing me to this day. I said, oh, no. Wow. 
We done. I done moved on twice after him. Damn. He mad. And, I, and I'm, I'm already showing you that I don't want you back. And then my question is, if you come back, what do you bring into the table? Nothing. That's another problem. Nothing. He was like, oh, that's not <laughs> relevant. What you no, mean? That, that's not the relevant. Thing. It but is that's relevant. the thing. Like, as a guy, like, whenever we go back, because I've been there. Like, if you go back, you're going back is because, you know, you're familiar with that. And you're hoping that they notice, yeah. like, you didn't really change. You're the same person. You're just, like, a year removed or, you know, time removed from the last time y'all interacted. And us, man, we do that shit so often. It's like, you know what? Like, maybe if I disappear for, like, nine months, I go on a hiatus and I come back, she'll still want me. And a lot of women will fall for that shit. They right, honestly but the will. the thing is, with, with this dude here, you still home with your mother sucking on her titties. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no. You, you in and out of jobs. You can't keep a job. So what can you do for Black is Love that I can't do for myself? That's the question mm. of the day. And that's where all women and men need to sit back in the mirror and say, what can this motherfucker do for me that I can't do for me? Mm. Yeah. I can pay my own bills. I can take care of my kid. I don't need you. Buy my nose. Go stay at your mother's house where you've been all your life. You're about to be almost 40 and you're still with your mama kissing her ass. Then you might as well go <laughs> fuck your mother. Ugh. Oh, see, oh, now you, you're talking. That, that's mad spicy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Uh-huh. No, I, I, I'm not, because my thing is, I'm in December, I'm going to be 40 years old. Do you think I got time for child's play? If I want child's no. play, I turn on motherfucking Chucky and watch his ass on HBO. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> not Chucky. <laughs> oh, That's oh the my problem. God. Nobody is checking nobody. No, Everybody mm. is just dealing with shit as it flow. No. Yep. It, it, it's either or. Absolutely. And I'm getting too old. I'm getting too old. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. That break Absolutely. shit. I wish a nigga would come me a break. I, I always say people, if, if somebody takes the time to check you, that means they care. The issue yeah. is a lot of people out here don't care about each other, so nobody gets checked. Yeah. 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 So, you know, Thank you again, Black is Love, for coming up on stage. We we got two more voicemails. I'm going to play this while you're on stage, if that's okay. Okay, no problem. All right, one second. I take a break as a break, break up. That's it, period. And then, girl, you better get you a new man or something like that. And that's period. Mm. Mm. How you feel about that? Oh, be by yourself. You could be by yourself. You yep. could be by mm-hmm. yourself, and then like, and then the problem is with him. He didn't like the fact that we we dated in fifteen, we broke up in sixteen, then we broke up for a year and a half, and then I met somebody. He got mad. I moved on, and then he tried to like, um, he wanted to do some narcissistic shit, some vindictive mm-hmm. shit. So I was like, oh, I got a fix for you. I got some boys for you. So we ain't gonna worry about that. And then that it calmed down, and then when we was gonna make it work again. All of a sudden, he goes, oh, I'm having problems at home, so I can't be in a relationship. So I said, okay, when you walk this time, ain't no coming back. How do you have problems at home when you live at home with your mama? Like that, because your mother, that, not... your mother want, the problem with the mother is that she wants his money. So if, mm. the mama wants, if the mama wants all the money, then what can you do for me? You can't take me to the movies. You can't take me out on dates. We can't go on vacation. And you sure ain't using my motherfucking money. <laughs> did we talk? Well, I don't but know. Yes, we did. No, we did. You you have to be able to afford the luxury of being in a relationship with a grown-up. That's not something you can do when you sleeping on somebody else's couch or you don't have your own foundation. You, you can't do that because that would be rude for him to be in his mama's house and having enough time and money to lounge around and date women when you're not even man enough to be in your own shit. Mm-mm-mm. And then you're not even showing me that you an adult. So you, how can you show me that you can pay bills by yourself? You're yeah. sharing the bills with your mama. Dad yeah. ain't paying the bills. You need to show not me even. struggle. I mean, not struggle. But you need to show me that, you know, I'm by myself. I got, he don't have no kids. So my mm. thing is, get you a studio apartment. 
pay your rent, pay your, your phone bill, do what you got to do, and then that can prove to me that you can be ahead of a household. But as long as you suck in your mama breast, Ooh. you ain't going to learn shit. Sorry. Yeah. I'm just so saying. So, fellas, fellas who is listening, you know, live on the podcast, or live on stereo, there is a distinct difference between somebody's son and a mama's boy. So just be clear, <laughs> just, just just be clear, because I, I see that shit all the time. I'm like, oh, like, you know, when, you know, the memes about like, oh, you know, me and somebody's son, it's like, yeah, it's okay to be somebody's son, but just don't be the right. mom's boy. And like, that's just like, just like me, I have a son, right? And my son, he's 12 years old. He got more money than some people that got jobs. Mm-hmm. Because why? I'm teaching him how to be a man, number one. Two, I'm teaching him about credit. I'm teaching him about taxes because I do taxes. So my thing is, he not going to be sucking my titties at no 37 years old. I'm sorry. You going to get the hell up out of here. Because then what you going to do? Bring the girls in the room? I don't want to. Oh, no. Oh. (laughs) I mean, there are some grown men that do that. But that's another thing. Women who baby their sons too long and then think oh when they turn 16 they about to turn into some young man with manners and uh assertiveness and a go-getter's mentality no and no, you, you gotta put that like, you gotta put that you gotta put that in the in the in their mind when they came out the womb like when he came out the womb i was like look little baby <laughs> oh, you ain't gonna be on the streets you ain't going to be doing no drugs. You're going to get your freaking education and you're going to get a career. And it's, well, listen to what I said. I said career. I didn't say job. Mm-hmm. A career is forever. A job is a right now. Temporary. That's another problem. People don't understand them two words. They are not the same. Mm. Mm-hmm. So hey, he already know because he got five more years. He going to be going off to college. I'm not going to be there with you when you staying on campus, washing your clothes and keeping your room clean. And I'm not going to be there for that. Mm. So you right. start them when they, you start them when they young, you know, when they two years old, you give them a rag and you teach them how to dust. Then when they get eight years old, you put a step stool in the kitchen. You're going to boil you this water. You're going to learn how to cook. Oh yeah. Mm. I ain't playing them games. I, I ain't raising no, no, no. Mm. Can't do it. Mm-mm. Facts. Facts. No. Well, hold on. We got two more voicemails, Black is Love, and then we're going to let you go back to the state. I guess we call that shit the, the gulag or whatever they call that shit. So, what, the message, I think the, the message. <laughs> what, whatever they call this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Shen, oh, let me Bye. see. I'll, I'll, I'll press the button one second. What's going on, panel? What's going on, Black is Love? How are you doing, Hi, beautiful? Hi, Alex. Alex. He's been in my live before. <laughs> uh oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, she's been in my life before. I take a break from a male or a female as <laughs> you found somebody else that you want to be with and now you want to try to explore that option to see if that's where you want to be at. And if it don't pan out, you want to come running back to where you know is normal for you. Trust me, I've been on that. I've never said I want to take a break, but I have had girls say they want to take breaks with me. And end up being with somebody they probably always was talking to you while they was talking to me. See that? See nah. Mm. Now you know what you know what's funny? Like I, I want I want to hear a little bit more from Alex. Like I, I've ne- we've never done this before on Loud Mouth where we you know we call people up on stage and just make them, you know, like not explain themselves, but more so like get a perspective that's not, you know, Greg and Shan, because we just do the shows by ourselves. So Alex, uh-huh. if he wants to come on. You know, it, it would be nice because, you know, we've definitely heard you, Black is Love, and I want you, you know, to stay on stage for a minute because I want to hear what Alex has to say, and hopefully, like, you know, the ladies, you know, both Shan and you can, you know, give a little bit of, like, perspective and response to what he has to say. So if he wants to come on stage, like, you know, come on up, bro. Like, I, I would love to hear his perspective. Okay. Okay. No problem. Yeah. But, Shan, you, know, you okay before... over there? You quiet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, yo. I'm reflecting on um, this break shit. <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I really want to ask people who did take a break 
and then go back to a person, did it make it better or worse? I just feel like if a person is not evolving, mm-hmm. uh, it didn't and it make it any better. You know what I'm saying? It probably weakened the con- connection. But if a person, let's say, had a drug habit, you know, went through rehab, uh, worked through their their shit and their trauma, and then became better five years later, and then y'all meet later in life, and then y'all talk, and you feel like this person has gotten their growth. Could that break have helped? Right, right. Okay. And just like with today, we had an argument because he called me and was like, I'm going to be honest. I want you back. I said, look, I have not dated you since 16. Well, when we tried it again in 17. I said, you only hmm. want me back because you see me happy. Yep. That's a yes, that and, I, and I said, because you're miserable as fuck. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, you're like, oh, I want to interrupt everything. And oh, he be buying you gifts and I said, yep. damn, you monitoring. Now, mind you, we're not on Facebook together. So, oh, which I... means because he's going on my Facebook page. Oh, my God. And mm-hmm. he's literally being a stalker. So, if I post a picture or something, it's like, oh, he got it at. Oh, I see this. Oh, I see that. And then he was like, oh, I see the picture on your profile page of you and him laying in the bed together. I said, because that's mine. It's not yours. So, you sound <laughs> like a hater. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, said, fellas, and, and, so, and, then, and then when I asked him the question, I said, what can you bring to the table when he said that don't matter? I said, kill yourself. Uh. Don't talk to me. <laughs> and that's when, I, that's when I blocked his ass from everything. Not and then he, he went he went on um he went on Facebook and was like, oh, she blocked me. And da 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 da. Come on, yo. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Yeah. That is, that is ugh. Boy, man, so, I'm so but, glad I'm out the game. So glad. No, th- no, so but that comes from his mother. His mother yep. didn't make him a man, so he's a yeah. crybaby. So now, when, yep. when rejection comes, he don't know how to take the rejection. Yeah, I'm. Am I'm I- learning that, and I think like you know, Shannon, and I, we have a show like you know that's supposed to be coming up about like people and rejection stuff like that because I'm starting to notice that a lot of men and women alike, but you know, specifically right now since we're talking about men. For men, uh, the reason why they can't handle rejection, we can't handle rejection, is because we have so many fucking options. Like, mm-hmm. y- you can pull out your phone, you can go on Twitter, you can go in your text messages, you can go out to bars. You can just, there's just way too many options for us that if we are rejected, we can just go and get more. That's just always. But been see, a thing. the thing is, but, the thing is with him, I feel like his rejection is no woman don't want him. And because yeah. when I dated him, he was living at home. So he probably saying, you know what, you're the only woman that accepted me living at home with my mother. So I should just come back to you. But then I said to myself, no, stupid. You need somebody <laughs> to be your match. Facts. If I got my own place, you got to have your own place. If I'm making 50000 you better be making 100000 That's how the Talk. shit go for me. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, that's only me. I can't speak for nobody else. No, but that's but, the thing. You're on. You're honest about it because you've already you set your standard and you've honestly made. You know, you've had your requirements. A lot of people will go into it and just like you know what, like I I can work with this and make the most out of it. Like no, I don't want to keep making the most out of it. Like I need you to come with what the fuck I want. Like 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 you said, if he's not making a hundred k, like what the fuck? Like I'm not taking seventy k. I asked for a fucking hundred. Like give me a fucking hundred. And if you can't do it, then so what? You'll be all right. Somebody <laughs> wants you, just not me. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right. But, I, don't, I don't know, man. But it just That's crazy to think about. I guess Alex, he didn't want to come up. Like, you know, yeah, hopefully he Alex. He, Let me see. Is he still in? Oh, there we go. Oh, there he go. Oh, there he go. Oh, and Cloud Chase. Okay. Okay, yeah. you got two. She commented too. Yeah, she had commented too. <laughs> okay. so. What's going on? Welcome to Loudmouth. Oh, hey, um, hey, Alex. Well, Deshaun, because that's what it's saying. What's going Deshaun. on? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Welcome good. to Loudmouth Stereo, man. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, I'm Greg, and you know my co-host, the the, the leader of the show, is Shan. Yeah. So. Oh, great. Um, yeah, like I was chiming in, listening to y'all talking. Me, me and Black Love already had this conversation like what a couple of days back about the same exact issue. 
yeah, yeah. We talked for a good. We talked. We talked for a good minute. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so like I understand. Like I understand where you're coming from because I already talked to you. So I already know the situation with you and old boy, all that. Mm-hmm. And like you know, I have my own take on that. You know, been, been around it most of most of my little. A half adult life because I can't say full adult life because I'm 135, so I can't say a full adult life yet. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's full. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am not enjoying my 30s. I'm. I'm ready for some 40s. Maybe the. Maybe the well, 40s. you could take. You could take my 40 because I'll be 40 in December, and I, I'm. I'm gonna say I'm 29. So listen. So, but yeah, we. I think after like after like twenty, you shouldn't be entertaining anybody who feels like they need a break. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because when I need a break from paying rent, I can't take it. When I need a break, <laughs> I can't take it. When I need a break from work, I just want to vacation. I can't take it. So what makes you think I'm about to take a break from someone I'm supposed to be doing life with? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a lot of people are like that, though. I think the reason why people want to take breaks is because they don't want to lose the person that they already know so they don't have to learn new people. They're like, you know what? Yeah. I want to fuck around a little bit. But you know what? I can always go back to you because you know me. Um, you know, Black is Love mentioned that earlier. Like, you know, the reason why, you know, he was coming back to her was because he knew. She she didn't even really, I don't want to say you accepted him for what he was. Like, you already knew the package before it even arrived at your doorstep. You're like, hey, I ordered Amazon, and Amazon showed up. I'm, I'm cool with that because I expect it. But him going out and meeting somebody new, imagine him going and be like, yo, I like you, and the girl like him. They think that they like him or whatever, and then they find out, hey, he live at home with his mama. They're like, oh, well, that's a little bit different. I, I don't think I really want that. So... You know, for him, that's his, you're his comfort zone. And I, I think a lot of women have to deal with that with us men where, you know, you guys are our comfort zone. So I, I guess since I have another guy on the panel, like, Deshaun, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like women are, like, our comfort zone, so to speak? Or Yeah, yeah, because yeah, as soon as you said that, I cringe because I hear my wife say that to me every other damn day. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, I live that moment every day, so... I always hear it because, like, me and my wife, we've been together, married from six together to 16. Wow. Mm. So, okay. you know, congratulations. We, you know, you know, you know, we had a lot of ups and downs and all that stuff. But at the same time, we also did take one break. And oh, that one Lord. break, and that, and that one break we took wasn't even that long. It was like four or five days. And we came to realize mm-hmm. that it was stupid because we do the same. We, we we had the same friends. We live in the same town. Everybody knows me. Everybody knows her. Mm-hmm. It, 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 we just reverted back to being with each other after that. Mm-hmm. It was like like if like like if I lived like if I lived in a different town and she lived in the town, we took a break. It, yeah, maybe we probably would have been back together. But I knew her family. She knew my family. I knew her friends and cousins. She knew my friends and cousins. There was no way that we were not going to meet back up and talk or be around each other because we knew so many people, there was no way that we could get around from, oh, I'm not never going to see her again. I might go to the west side of where I'm from. She's going to be there. Her family lives on that side. I, I cannot not see her. But we end up talking and fixing it. But yeah, she tells me now, like, it's the same thing. She's like, you know, I think you I think you made me your comfort zone when we first were together. And I was like, yeah. I don't think so. Because I was, I was like, I don't think so. I was like, you got to think about it. Before I met you, I had a girlfriend. And I had a side chick, and you had a boyfriend, and we broke up with all of them to be together. I was like, so I don't think you're a comfort zone because I had options, and I just mm-hmm. had all options. All right. <laughs> oh, you talking spicy now? Okay. Oh, all right. I, I, I see it. Yeah, mm-hmm. me, 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 and my wife' lifestyle can literally be turned into a lifetime special. I swear, I would oh. love one to be. <laughs> it would have to be like thirty parts. I swear. Hey, hey, as long as it's not a Tyler Perry production, I am completely uh. with you, bro. <laughs> first of all, first of all, I don't want Tyler Perry, and I don't want uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Who? Oh, Wendy Williams. Uh, I don't want neither one of them two to choose nobody for me because I'm already yeah. brown skin. Don't you don't you cast no light skin ass Puerto Rican dude for me? The hell no! Don't do that. That's not me. <laughs> don't do that stupid shit. I don't need to be cast wrong. I play my own part. I play me and my own shit. Don't do that. I, I hear that. So yeah. Shane, yeah, you, you um, know, when people get um comfortable with 
you know, a woman that they know that they feel like they can go back to that park pussy. Park oh. pussy because men who feel like this woman is someone I can trust, someone I don't have to worry about being in the streets a lot. I don't have to worry about nobody else also coming and being in her. Is is I know is how I leave it is how I'm gonna come back to it. That's called part. Well, he think he thinks it's part pussy. <laughs> well, some of the times it is part pussy because this is not the one that creeps that out and about. You know, I'm gonna see them at the club. I'm gonna see this lounge. I'm gonna see him over here. But for like private though. He knows mm-hmm. that this woman over here minds her business. She works. She handles her business. She comes home and she's very chill. A lot of women are in relationships with males who live single, but they know that they are part pussy. And whenever he gets tired, at least he'll be here. And that I, I, I see me a t-shirt. Listen, yeah, that's dude. Fucking t-shirt. That's I not, might, that's I might work on, I might, I might work on that tomorrow. <laughs> that and, shouldn't and, be the and, goal and to be part of this too. Mm-hmm. I don't know no man that's sitting waiting for a woman and not testing other women. That dumb motherfucker, I know. <laughs> I do. I know one. I know one. I got a, I got a friend in Charlotte just like that right now. He just waiting for the right oh, one. Wow. He don't even, he, he don't even entertain women like that. He might get on Facebook and say certain things that because he has a lot of female friends. He people get on Facebook and say, you know, the things that they told him and things that he's seen over the course of years. He he was playing his side and how he feel about it. But my boy has been single since 2015. Mm. Oh wow. He hasn't entertained the fact that nothing like that. He hasn't the fact that women would try to talk to him, date him, mm-hmm. it's cool and all to him, but he kind of just wants to be settled down, but he wants to be settled down with the right person. So he just He's not out here in the streets, and it's like I had like like I said before, before me and my wife kind of doing with my wife. I was still talking to certain women here and there. I was entertaining them, being stupid because I was fucking young. Him, when I met him, he had a girlfriend. When they broke up, that was it for him. He was like, "Well, I guess I'm just going to be single for a while." And he ended up being single for a good minute, and he has, it has not bothered him not one time. Wow. Yeah. But see, the the best part I got from that is the fact that he was single for a while, which means he was actually learning to be alone and be by himself in order to figure out exactly what the fuck he wants. A lot of people don't want to do that shit. And, you know, like the title of the show, like, you know, about like breaks and stuff like that. A lot of people need breaks because there are a lot of serial daters out here who don't know how to be alone. So like, you know what? Like shit, like what you mean? We got to take a break. Like all I know is relationship. All I know is to date. So like, I don't want to be alone. And people aren't like man or woman enough to say, you know what? I just, I can't be alone. I need somebody around at all times in order to validate me and you know this so. that's kind of me that, that that's kind of me like the long mm-hmm. the longest relationship i have with my wife was two years the longest time i didn't date nobody was for two and a half years so it was like it was kind of it was kind of thing like i told like i told black girl before i used to be the quiet dude in my high school nobody nobody knew me only people knew me was people to grow with me. once mm-hmm. i started like having sex and started being known and like like love said being passed, I was being passed around. Didn't realize it. I was young. I was getting ass. I wasn't trying to think about nothing else. I realized that I don't like being alone. And now that I'm older, I don't even like dating. I don't want to date again because I don't want to get to know people and get to know dislikes and likes now. Because the way people, are, the way people mind things different, the relationship don't last long. And I don't want to go through. Oh, I know your favorite color. I know your family. You this, and then we break up two weeks later. What was the point? Of that? that was a waste of time. <laughs> So like I don't like being yeah. alone, and if I if I end up doing being alone, it's gonna be a long time before I start dating somebody again. Like it's gonna be. I, I already told my friend, I'm like, once I'm alone again, that is it. I'm just gonna just not date. I'm like, I will entertain people, I will have fun, talk to them. I said, but like sex, relationship wise, getting new, nah, I'm cutting that all short. That, that's not even happening. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, black is love. Have, you know, how do you feel about that? Like, you know, in terms of what uh, Deshaun said, like, were you a little bit the same, or were you completely different? Um, what I should have did when he broke up at 16, I should have blocked him like my friend told me to. <laughs> but I didn't do that. What I was doing was, okay, we broke up, but we could still be friends. Mm. 
But then he's like, okay, we can be friends. So that year and a half, he's thinking, all right, cool, she ain't dating nobody, which I wasn't. And then I started talking to somebody new, and he went bananas. Oh, I'm going to hit him up on Facebook, and I'm going to tell him that I still love you. I said, well, go ahead, stupid. I can't. Damn. He, he, he you the gonna... full Drake. Like... And, <laughs> and then he was like, oh, and then I said, well, go ahead and hit him up. I'll give you his direct number. Mm-hmm. If you want to call he's him, and he like, huh? And I said, no, you popping that shit, but see, he's a mouth talker. Yeah. He talked that shit, uh, but can't walk that shit. So then, gonna be a when fun. when me and the guy broke up, um, then that's when we tried again, and that's when my friend. Mm-hmm. That's when I promised myself, if it don't work out that time, I wasn't coming back no more, and I didn't. But still, to this day, he still was chasing me. I told you we argued to this morning. Damn. How you hit me up this morning at eight in the morning? You ain't even wash your face and brush your motherfucking teeth, and then you gonna text me talking about some good morning? We need to have a talk. Talk about what? Mm. Like what are we talking okay, about? So- and then he was like, "Oh, are you you know, are you are you still taken?" I said, "Yeah." And then he was like, "Oh, you ain't gonna never break up with him." I said, "It doesn't matter if I do break up with him. I ain't coming back to your bitch ass." Oh my lord. <laughs> Lord, so you know that that, that that's a great. Yeah, one. We're gonna I probably block him. I officially blocked him today. Like I, I'm done. I'm tired. So you were doing the right thing by blocking him. So you know, before we wrap up, I want to give everybody like just one minute to kind of like just to answer the question, and you know, obviously tell people where they can follow you on social media. But the question is, you know, can you come back after a break, or would you come back after a break? So no. we'll start with Black is Love. Like, no, <laughs> no, hell no, hell no. She didn't even let the question get out. Girl, hell no, don't go back, don't go back. Abort mission, abort the damn mission. Damn, okay. <laughs> they, they what about you, bro? Um, I can't say abort the mission. Like I said, I went on break with my wife, and it, it kind of made us kind of made us better when we did it. Even though I was probably, I probably was the worst option for her at that time, but the dude she was with before was way worse than me. Mm. So I really can't, I really can't say yeah, do it, and I can't say no, don't do it. I guess it's really all deception on if you really think you can make it work, or you think that it's over and you're ready to move on. You just got to choose which side you want. You just can't teeter totter in the middle. Okay, okay, that's a perfect response. So, you know, the, the the host of the show, the lady of the show, Shan, you know, I, I don't get to say so because I'm married, so I don't I have a dog in this fight, but <laughs> Shan, you know, so Shan, you know, the question obviously not only gets posed to you, but you get to wrap up the show for us as the host of the show. So Shan, can you come back after the breakup? I will say all of my exes, I could come back. Did I want to or does it matter or did it make it better? No. So I say once you feel like you need to leave it, leave it. You know? Unless okay. a person is really showing you growth and difference and y'all have like a, a a legit connection and you would do for this person if they had they were butt naked with nothing because they are they are deserving. But if it ain't that, no. Okay. No. Well, oh, and we have a voicemail. We're going to play this voicemail, and then we're going to get up out of here. You know, Shane's going to do the you know the exit, so let me just go ahead and hit that button. <laughs> hey, shout out to the, to the panel for this amazing title. To answer the question real quick with my two cents, like, I mean, I absolutely do believe that you can go back after a break, but it's more like, why would you want to? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of endurance about to take place if you go back somewhere that you obviously left because it was a problem and i think a lot of times when it comes to relationship once we separate from that mate for a little while we start to remember the good times you know what i'm saying them motherfuckers start ringing a bell you start thinking about the shit you miss you understand what i'm saying you, you forget about that bad shit that made you say hey get the fuck away from me bro you forget about that shit it get light <laughs> you dig? So now nah, I don't believe in returning nowhere that I left. You dig? Absolutely. Absolutely. Shout out to Heaven Sent. We got one more from Josh. Damn, I'm late. Uh, y'all, y'all about to end it and I just came in the chat. 
<laughs> yeah, we, we're about to actually wrap it up. Shane, you know, you can obviously, you know, you can come back on tomorrow or Saturday because we've got two more shows. we got one on Friday and we got one on Saturday. But Shane's going to explain that while we exit. So with that being said, Shane, you take the floor. So um, this is our mouse. We only record on Sundays and Saturdays. But um, we decided to give y'all a hot 60 minutes for Thursday. And we have a hot 60 minute tomorrow with a different topic. Um, we pull people up from the audience, which is something we never do, um, but we enjoyed it. It was pretty good. If you would like to join us tomorrow, be back here at 9 o'clock. Uh, we will be live. This is actually on a podcast, um, so Loud Mouth Stereo Podcast. You can look it up on your podcast platforms. You can also find Greg's show, Young, Black, and Bothered, as an actual podcast on your podcast platforms. And my show, She Gets It Podcast, which is also a podcast. And we merged, we made Black Mouth for So um, we will be back Saturday also with a collab show with The Looking Glass um, with E. Ruth and Kev. So you could come back on Saturday also. It will be about 10 o'clock, 9.30-ish. We'll be on here on Saturday. So we're here. Um, we appreciate y'all coming up, and uh, we got another message in the box, and then we go close up the show. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Same, same here. We appreciate it. I, I, I might, I might pop into y'all sixty minutes tomorrow, right after I do my podcast. My podcast yeah. ends at right at eight o'clock, so I will pop in with y'all, see what y'all talking about. That's good well, money. You know, yeah, shout out your social media and your podcast, man. Like, you know, we share the wealth around here. Oh, okay. Um, like I said, they my my name on here is Deshaun, but I host I am one half of a host of a tag team duo to host a wrestling podcast on Friday. It is called the Ultra Hills Podcast with a Z at the end. Um, we talk about all wrestling, regular things that happen out the day. We just give people a laugh and a joke for a while. We go in five years strong. On YouTube, Google, Google, uh, Google streaming, Spotify, we're a little bit of everywhere now. Um, you can catch me on social media. Uh, you can actually look at it through my Instagram on here because my social media is Alex the O G S T Hill, uh, and my Twitter is Andre Three Stacks. And you can catch me on either one of those two. I'm normally going by the name of. Uh, the Stanley of podcasting because I've been doing it for so long and I'm so used to talking on radio and doing stuff that I'm always everywhere and I have a, a bit of knowledge about a lot of things so if you want me on your show to give a little bit of knowledge from my side of you I will give it to you and if you just want to talk about anything random I'm down for it absolutely absolutely and what about you Miss Black is Love um I just pop up I, like I can be on stereo today and I won't be on the next week so I'm not really <laughs> <laughs> podcaster like people will call me and say oh you're busy and I'm like yeah I want to schedule the show before you just call my phone but mm -hmm. you know yeah so I just yeah. keep on here sometimes so okay well, hopefully you on here more and you know you come back for more episodes so okay, hopefully will, we see you again you know but you I know will, as will. usual Shane you know you, she gives the exit so you know I guess I'll give it this week. So thanks again for everybody, you know, for coming in tonight, listening, leaving voice notes, things like that. But if you want to come back, come back tomorrow, come back Saturday. But until then, we will see you later. Have a good evening. Peace. See you later. Peace. Peace out. Peace.